but found in his child. And therefore, Shiva and Shakti may be contribute to turn the lands into green lands, which the planets helps them so on in the station, so that people can remain staying by her. And here we have what the devoted uh, expression of the Guruji Yashantaracharya that we say, hey, Seva, we Seva. Seva is the means. Visheva is an extreme devotion. He is dedicated by the word Visheva. I devote very much to the deity for benefit. So here there is a dimension of the ratio, and uh, I have the moisture is Maya, then Maya disappears of the Bhagavan, all of that life understood. That means when the seven the lighting disappears, uh, then we are able to visualize that. Uh, you are so much, so many meanings are being taken out from this particular verse of the sloka. But for our understanding, we have to imagine that uh, the way to the shining light, uh, or that is a shakti, and which is like that is swamita, that is lightning, and uh, soda is the form of soda mini, and there are nara varana studied with armaments and uh, we are able to get over and get free from somewhat taught me that you will see uh, troubling the whole three words. So Sri Vumanam somewhat taught me is Vajate and Shiva is the form of cloud is Paritumasana. And here in this sloka we have to imagine something about the Manipur uh, Chakra, where the Bhagavad Gita gets seated there and she is lighting the darkness to light. Now she might be dark now, but in darkness, I mean, I can just see the house. Who comes to look at the house? Who comes to look at the house? Who comes to look at the uh, Mrityu forces and more important of priority Sun, Moon, Wind and Chandra. These are the four enemy, four Mrityus who would consume the eyes of people warm in the world. Therefore, Sun also is a Mrityu in a way told about. So, the, and also depending upon the position of the Sun and Moon and all that, these astrologers are able to depict uh, or describe the power and uh, tell the future of the natives born on this world. So, and also by reciting this sloka, one would be able to get a clue to the kind of, uh, in the form of dream, that what would be the future described for the native. The future also sometimes is getting uh, indicated in the dreams to some people, and that scope is there, yeah, and the scope confirmed when we recite the sloka, bhakti. Now I go to the next sloka, which is also very more powerful, and continuation of the Manipura Chakra and its importance. And it's a Mugladhara Chakra is being, because you know we have got some chakra, in all the six chakras we find that Parvati and Parameshwara both are present. And therefore, we have the unusual, excellent uh, energy being produced when people travel from chakra to chakra through the Kundalini uh, Pudasar and Pava. Now I am repeating the 41 sloka. <laughs> Udayani Dimutis Yadaya, Sanatapyam 
and uh, the accepted responsibility to be being parented, being father and mother. Therefore, Parvati Parameshwara, the parenting of the universe is being done by them. And again, as the Muladhara Chakra, and uh, the goddess is known as Samayamba. As Samayamba, Tripura Sundari, is part of the Russian Rutya, and uh, um, Samayamba is Parvati, and here on the Bhairava, Shiva is part of, is uh, part of the Tantava, Rutya, and uh, containing all the nine rasas, like Chungara, uh, Hasya, Karuna, Veera, etc. And then, more important is that in the Sri Vidya tradition, the 41 slokas are considered as Ananda Bhairavi uh, or Ananda Lahari, and the remaining 49 slokas are called Saundarya Lahari, and uh, that's why it is called Puru Bhaga and Uttara Bhaga. In the Vedic in the tradition, uh, when they were, whenever they do Parayana, of whenever they make a religious application, some people read up to 41 slokas and end up the Saundarya Lahari Upasana, and some more people start from 42nd sloka and end up with the 100th sloka and Uttara Bhaga only. So, but uh, uh, in all respects, people, there are some other section of people who try to not divide, who try not to divide these 100 slokas into two divisions and uh, simply follow it totally, uh, which we are following in our Vedantya uh, Kendra, we don't separate. And I have attended some Sounder Lahari Havana Parayana programs where some, some groups where they are trying to do only 41 slokas made a Mankanya Pachara Puja and they concluded their Upasana. But here we are doing, that's why this is Ananda Lahari first season. And why all this? See, these are the slokas, the 41 slokas are basically composed by Lord Shiva in place of his wife Parvati whom he loved greatly. No, Shiva has so much love and admiration for Shakti Parvati and so Shiva is never angry upon Parvati. He is always kind, affectionate, loveable to her. Therefore, he, he, he uh, shared 50% of his body and got the credit of being uh, called as the Adhanari Swara and so she has, he has given. But uh, there is a uh, Sankaracharya imagine that uh, uh, Parvati and taken the 50% of the body of her. The Shiva, she is trying to occupy the Aruna 50 and make uh, completely it is an Aruna Shiva. That's why the that Aruna Shiva forum, this is who you completely Aruna and uh, tawny color and quite lovable and compassionate. In Rudram, you come across a beautiful expression, Tamra Aruna Buddha Bhaprasu Mangala. In Shiva, it's supposed to be Tamra Aruna Bhapru and ultimately calling Sumangala. So, that kind of uh, reference in Vedas also is fine regarding the Adhanari Swarapatva or Swarupa of Lord Shiva and as you see in the Rudra. And second thing is these 41 slokas comprise Devi's status, duty and universal functions of Parvati along with Lord Shiva. So Shiva and Parvati, Parvati especially is main because in the functional activity uh, Parvati excels because Shiva is always sitting in meditation. But Parvati is one who has to execute and find out all that. Therefore she becomes a Durga Parameshwari also as an executive head or as a working sector goes to spots and tries to function and see that peace and amity is being uh, established. Therefore, uh, all that uh, functional excellence of Parvati has uh, been described in the 41 slokas and uh, of course Parvati is also there. And the patronizing for the world became so complete that both Parvati and Parameshwara took the role of being parents to respect the other the greenery and life activity in the three worlds. And also try to give a kind of nihara or peace and shanti to the world 
which is being threatened by the Pranaya Agni. And the Pranaya Agni is again Lord Shiva who is called Sada Shiva. And uh, that kind of work is done by the 41 Sloka is important. And again, point to the great compassion that Devi possessed as Sri Matsi, Sri Mata, Sri Maharani, etc. And the whole world has been calmed down. And therefore, the activity in the world is infused once again as a Leela display. That's why Leela Mahavarasana. After some peace is there in the world, we have the beautiful expression compliment for Lanka Parameshwarya. Leela Kalpita Brahmanda Mandala Yena Moonamaha. See, the entire Brahmanda Mandala is a Leela. Leela is a sport. Because the see, people keeping quiet want to create work for themselves. Therefore, Parvati, Parame Parvati has taken the sportivity of giving activity in the world and therefore she is again superseding or supervisory to all that. And here, the Lord Shiva became the dark rain giving cloud while she became the Saudavini uh, or lightning or the very energy for that. Actually, when Saudavini is found in the dark cloud, you can definitely expect a rain. So therefore, this Shakti and Shiva found in the dark rain giving dark cloud is a combination suitable for rain and sharp in the world. And Devi and Deva Shiva became parents and uh, so in order to organize the ordinariness in that. And another point of what because we have come to the Anandalahari conclusion, I like to explain some more points which will uh, strike the importance of the first 31 slokas of the set of the Sandarya Nahari. And also here you find the Satchakras in human body. They are the seeds of Devi and the Bhagavan Shambhu. The details and importance of them are very well portrayed by Stavant Devi Upasaka Sankaracharya. You know Sankaracharya was not Devi Upasaka at first. Only to win the complete battle book in a literary battle with that Mandala Mishra and his wife Sayyad Devi, we had to get into importance of safety. This is the real definition of Sankara and it will be, but it is an accomplishment that Sankara has the realized importance of safety and said, for that sixty, he worked hard. In fact, he has made Parakaya Pravesa also, and he has got all the way, and he defeated Sarada Devi, and he installed her also. So this kind of object matter that you find in that uh, sloka is full of mysticism and spirituality. And actually, all that extra Knowledge has been infused by Sankara in these slokas. Otherwise, man is uh, man has to decide. Remember that he is not simply a sack of flesh, blood, and bones, but is something more, more, and more, and more. So there is everything possible for a man. That's exactly what we have got many demonstrations by the gods becoming men and then achieving. Sri Rama is a grand example there. He demonstrated that man. And therefore, you know, Sri Rama is, is describing one week as a Sri Devi, the Sri Rupini only. That's why in Bharakanda, one describes Rama as Sriyam Purusha Vigraham. Please remember, Sriyam Purusha Vigraham. Sita Devi describes this, that Rama is a is a stream in our uh, feelings and emotions, but only looks like man. Which means that Shakti and Shiva or uh, Shiva Tva both are combined then only. And moreover, I've been telling that every man has got a 50% of woman in him, and every woman has got 50% of man in him. Therefore, when this balance is stricken, they are able to be boldly existent and manage all those things. That's why, so a great philosophical wisdom rose up in the mankind uh, because of uh, Shakti and Shri 
positive uh, combination in their place and they are playing the role of a uh, role of uh, uh, you know, role of safety and uh, she pays for that. So X is uh, my first. Therefore, we have got number of stages, saints, deep devotees, and different different kinds of bhaktas. We have got kaparikas, goras, agoras. Oh, so many kinds of people are there. Engrossed in devotion to Devi, engrossed in devotion to. In fact, uh, in the in 70s and 80s, when we visited the Mahakala temple in Ujjaini, yeah, we found the temple was not that greatly developed. There were so many people, devotees of Lord Shiva, they were in trance, just lying down on the sides of the, the temple. Because the Mahakala, the Google Deva, who gives the culmination of life. And therefore, you can imagine the personal devotees, how they are being made up. So, it's all because of Shiva and Parvati influence. And by knowing this, we are transported into a region of bliss, hope and happiness. And the emotions drive the Upasaka the realms of greater reality. And of course, Upasana is one way or a measure that we will be rising high in the spirituality. But that's why we are always advised to close our eyes whenever we start into the way of meditation. Because only when you close your eyes, the divinities start working. And sometimes divinities will give suggestions to you when you go to sleep and in the form of dream. That's why dream is also an interesting medium through which gods would be able to speak the calendar of the individuals or the expectations of the individuals or the prosperity of the individuals and ultimately the goals of them. So these emotions uh, drive the Upasaka to the realms of greater spirituality. And so in a way, when we introspect uh, what has been told in these 41 slokas, it could be that you understand the eighth sloka is talking about the Chidananda Lahari. Means Chidananda. Chit is the nervous region of the mind. I told you that our mind has got different uh, layers or compartments, and the, the, uh, the base is Chidakara or Chitsurupa or Chidananda, and the, it is being translated as the Chishu mind, where from all decisions of strong nature rise up from Chit Akasha, and even Parameshwari is nothing but an abstract principle coming out from the mind. That's why Uddi Manasa Hamsika Yena Bhavanamaha. See, Manasa Hamsika means you can't see them. But only those who are Munis, they can only probably realize or visualize or experience the existence of Parameshwari. So we have got uh, eight sloka talking about Chidananda Lahari. And the 21st sloka of this, you see, the Parama Ahlada Lahari. See, Ahlada is the highest joy and happiness and rejoice. And the Parama is simply supreme. Extreme Ahlada Lahari is the way. Just coming and striking at you. So, in fact, uh, Hiranya Kasapu had four sons. And Prahlada is the last son. And uh, he had named all his four sons with, uh, with the name Khlada, Mahalada, and ultimately Prahlada. Anyway, here, Paramahlada Lahari. And having attained the Paramahlada, or highest joy, highest bliss, highest ecstatic experience, then in the 34th Sang Sloka, we have beautiful suggestion or reminder given by Shankaracharya. Samagasa Parananda Parayoho Bhavana. See, we have got Parananda Parayoho Samagasa Bhavana. We are being introduced to that in the Tikhos Slaka. And at that time, the next immediate sloka, that is the 35th sloka, you see the Parameshwari to be absolutely in the form of Chitananda. Supposing if you want to imagine the Chitananda, how would it be like? It will be simply Lalita Parameshwari only. Something like in Lalita Sahasnavam. You see, what is Lalita? Shiva Sekti Eka Swarupini 
श्रीमाता शिव शक्ति एक स्वरूपिणी श्री महाराजी एक्सेट्रा ऑल दैट इज अ नेम Even for the combination of Shiva and Shakti, and that Shiva and Shakti is one. She is actually Kunda Samputa. Then she is person. She is born from Shiva and Kunda. Then she will be having definitely the Chidananda Kara. And now, when we come to the last sloka, which we are dictated, that is the forty-first sloka, where Ananda Hari, the Ananda Hari composition reaches the culmination or a conclusion. Here you see Shiva and Parvati, and they are trying to Shiva as a Navarasa, um, Danda Vanata, and explain the Natya faculty, uh, faculty, and Parvati as Lasya Priya Lalitari, and so Parvati Lasya, and uh, both of them trying to. Um, Suggest or demonstrate the nine rasas, uh, which is the very sap of human life or divine life. So, bhakti rasa. In fact, you know, in Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu has beautifully classified the yogas. How best one 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 would be able to elevate oneself. One has to be karma yogi at the same time with the attachment of bhakti and nana. So the bhakti nana attached to the karma yoga that will be given the bhosha and something like that. So samaras navarasa bhat andavanatam. So here also the last chapter is where. If we it is where Chandra says, see in when pralaya taken place or when Shiva is making the pralaya dance and rukya or the cosmic dance, that time there was only one spectator. She is Lalita Parmeshwari herself to so appreciate the dance, the Tanda and Rukya of the Chandra Sekhar. Nagana, when it takes place, she will be sitting at the first seat as a spectator. So on and so forth. So all this is described to tell us that we are rising high, high, and scope of rising into heights of spirituality is never exhausted. For that purpose only, we had a beautiful Shivaratri. You know we are allowed to sleep for three sixty-four nights horizontal to the ground, but only one night we are supposed to be erect. Our backbone remaining perpendicular to the ground, sitting in posture, meditation, or puja, or tatha, or pala, and whatever it is. So one night we have to stay for that. That's why it's called ratri. We have got number of ratris are there. So we have. Kalaratri, Maharatri, Aratri, Ratri, Pa, many ratris are there, but only there is one ratri which is established as Shivaratri, and that Shivaratri is really powerful there. Now another question is, why people call it as a first part, forty-one slokas as first part or Ananda Hari? Because the word Ananda is found at different different levels and gradations, and you know Ananda Bhimamsa. Is a is a subject matter. Probably, if you are familiar with Tantra three Upanishad, the Ananda Valley is the last section. In the Ananda Valley, there is the uh, Ananda Bhimamsa. Bhimamsa means investigation into the layers and equation of this supreme in two senses. There is Manusha Ananda, then Darva Ananda, <coughs> Deva Ananda. And Brahmananda, oh, so many, and uh, each Ananda is multiple of thousand times, and so one can climb up the ladder of Ananda, so 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 and so on, and ultimately go to the Chidananda, the bliss of Chit mind. So, Shankara Charya in Nirvana Sattva, Nirvana is Moksha, is the manifestation. He has described. In six sloka, in six sloka, has described what is nirvana. No, no, no. Thank you, Allah. I am not, not this, not this, not this. What you consider a value, not that is value. And ultimately, he said, "He was the Ananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham." So I am Shiva. Shivoham Shivoham. He repeats two times. We are uh, the two, first time one meeting. Second time another meaning, and uh, ultimate one is Chidananda. That's why they got the Paramananda, the supreme bliss, Parananda Parayoho Samarasattvam, 
is another thing, balancing of bliss at higher and highest levels. But, you know, it, it is good to talk all these things and know about all these things. But to realize and rise up, we must early anugraha of Devi. And it is possible because Suharadhyaya and uh, uh, Devi, Pramipa, Devi is supposed to be very much uh, accessible to us. She is not something to, she is not uh, very far away. And whatever bad ideas are there in us, she will try to uh, drive them away and make us pure and elevate us. Just right? dura, in Alta Sastama, you are not expression, just dura, prajara samani, dosha vajjita, etc. So there, uh, whatever do, do, do is there, all that do is driven up. When do is driven up, shanti comes up. Something like Mahabharata, you know, all the brothers, Duryodhana, Dushyasana, etc., even the sisters also called Dutu. All the Dus are driven away, and then only Pandavas, Pandavas means there are white people, pure people, sanctified people, able such people only win the war of life, and war, and they will be the rulers and all that. That's why Dhrivarashtra, Duryodhana, Dutu, Dutu. Like that all that truth is being given up. And therefore, we have got these beautiful expressions like Chidananda. It is abstract experience. And in fact, there are people who enjoy that kind of abstract bliss for small time, for big time, or for lifetime. And it's all possible through yoga. That's why Krishna has taken yoga as a measure to Arjuna to make him successful in the mundane duties same time we have the super mundane experiences. She, she cannot remain abstract, not visible, not having a form. <coughs> so, in order to consider ordinary people, she has to have a, some form, some but like any human beings, you know. For example, Yekta Yekta Swarupini. And uh, even for Vishnu Sahasrama, Anirte Seva Puhu Sri Mahan. So Anirte Seva Puhu, you cannot definitely prescribe this is the form, shape, style and appearance of the God. So Yakta is visible, Avyakta invisible. So but there is this all happening in our own mind. So she, she is born in the Chitakni Kunda and therein enjoys her emergence in it. Later, she took the form of Dharakasha, and uh, Dharakasha is uh, Akasha in this place. And she takes her form, uh, and then Rashava is the Nata, actor, showing forth the histrionics of the Tandava dance, everything on. <coughs> now, uh, Shiva is the uh, promoter of the bliss, on one hand, ultimately granting you the emancipation, meaning that you need not be the moral. See, for example, Shivaratri, if people really observe the number of Shivaratris, supposing people are 70 <coughs> and more and more years, they have gone through so many Shivaratris. And uh, every Shivaratri is uh, an improvement and uh, uh, a scope for improvement and all that. Like that, here also, small opportunities are often the beginning of great enterprises and its outcome is like the plant from seed growing in the Yabalian tree with roots very ending to a downwards. So in all respects, the 41 slokas cover around the experience of Ananda, which is the mantra effect when Upasana is done. The real purport of these 41 slokas it is fit for meditation, understanding, construing and also going to um, yes, yogic uh, experience, then you will ask what will be, and you will be having experience. And uh, everybody has got level of experience, and uh, that's why when Sankaracharya himself says, uh, all that uh, uh, spiritual highs which he talks about is uh, depending upon the one's own experience. Swadu Bhava Vedyam, it is always understandable recognizable only through one's own sopava. 
श्री चक्र आयुधा श्री चक्र हाईली पवरफुल अंड इवन सूर्य चक्र आलो इसी चक्र अंड कंट्रोल and uh, meditation om kar meditation before we uh, there is uh, the yogins uh, teach us that ultimately the globe of light which is traversing in the body ultimately settles in the muladhara and uh, takes the form of ganapati and they are on the while reading this particular uh, shloka number of times the 41 one would be able to get rid of the water water roga that is gas troubles And uh, all sorts of problems will be thrown down because of that. And uh, the same is being uh, indicated in the yoga master's talk. So because the breath control is most important. That's what is called pranayama. Through pranayama only one is able to achieve calmness, and that calmness is a great peace to the entire body. So. In this uh, one more thing, I'll say I'll conclude. See, Sri Ram Kampati, Yoga Nuchya Sarvada Vishwam Tatraiva Dushyate Sarva Deva Daha Tatraiva Dushyanti. So, the Sri Ram Kampati, when you get to the yogic postures and meditation, our body shivers. Shivering means that it's a spiritual one, and that's why. Uh, that type of status is called a vipra. You know, we have got a brahmana, vipra, sushmatriya. Uh, there are all the ranks in brahmins. Vipras are those Vedic scholars who are able to vibrate and respond to the uh, come to the mantras and their sixty and their responses. And in them, the yoga will be constantly present, and all devatas remain. Those who get on to be uh, yogi, that's why Adhaye, Arvaveda, Asma, Adhara, Vastaye, all Veda, all knowledge, all gods, everything is found in the Mula Thar Chakra, which is Athar Chakra, and therefore this Athar Chakra is to be meditated primarily. In the same strain, the advantages of other chakras are also described in the Sanskrit Jnanadana Hari that we have seen one by one, and therefore we can imagine that we can conclude that it is really an exciting feeling and experience to get knowledge of Devi in a physical form, in a spiritual form, and she will be ultimately uh, described truly as Sundari Hari. That is, this sundar sundariya means sundarata ya bhava anubhave. When that sundaratva, sundaratva means symmetry, all symmetry. There is no dent or no bulge or anything like that. It is perfect round. That's what is heavenly. So the yoga, the yoga of this kind of asana, the the uh, the upasana will definitely get the yoga phala. Therefore, from yoga point of view. From mantra point of view, from tantra point of view, from other uh, many uh, points of view, the first forty one slokas, which we call described as like, truly as Ananda Hari, so much important. And next forty two and downwards of fifty nine, we find uh, the decoration, the part, the uh, the beauty, the exquisite beauty of Nanda uh, Parameshwari. Is as a Mahan Tripura Sundari. She is called Sundari, not simply Tripura Sundari. And then Shiva Sundari she is, and she has won the mind, or she has attracted the mind of Shiva, who is constantly in meditation. And so, if she were to win the heart of Shiva, you can imagine the beauty, not simply physical beauty. But it is also the spiritual beauty. That's exactly what Kalyanasa describes in Kumara. Some probably must have heard the beautiful Mahakalya 
written by Kalidasa in the fifth canto, he says, Tata Samaksham Tata Manobavam Vinakina Bhaktam Nuratha Sati Vininda Rupam Pradayena Parvati Tiesa Vakya Phala Hicharuta In this, he starts the fifth canto, where, wherein Shivas who got engrossed and God appreciated uh, the, the tapas and the spiritual excellence in Parvati. He comes himself and says that Tavas Vidasa Kritas Tapodhanai. Shiva declares that now I have become your dasa, your servant, because I am now purchased by you by virtue of your tapas. Tapas is the, uh, if you understand, uh, with which you have made me a servant to you, Tavaspitaha, and you see in the word, Sritaha Tapodhanai. We can buy God by your concentrated penance and devotion. Because the gods are but for sale. That's what the child has an idea. So, fifth canto will tell us that how Parvati excelled both in physical beauty and when her physical beauty failed. Then she tried to exert her spiritual beauty, attracted the mind of Shiva, and then they became Shiva and Parvati, the primordial parents. Now I read the 42nd sloka from then onwards. So actually, the, the Varnana of Devas will go from head to top, from top to tie, while the Varnana of humans go from tie to top. So that's why. Now the head of uh, the crown, decorating the head of Sri Devi, is beautifully described. Now when we are reading the Southern Hari, you get that uh, the remembrance of the uh, description found in the Nama and the Hrita Sasnama, four Nama, ten Nama, and six Nama collectively represented in one sloka. Now, see, we have got uh, the Kirita Vandana in Hrita Sasnama, so beautiful done. And the same Kirita Varnana is found in the 42nd sloka. Beautiful, I am reading. Om Gatair Manikyatvam Gagana Manirisandra Ghatitam Kiritam Te Haimam Iva Girisute Intagetiyaha Tanije Yachaya Surana Sapala Chandra Sakalam Tanusrauna Sinam Imiti I repeat, and uh, see the sloka looks so direct and so simple, but when you seem to academically understand, spiritually realize, you will see the Parvati Devi's Kirita, how beautiful it is, and how uh, everybody's Kirita, you know. But Parvati Kirita is simply exclusively done, and uh, she is the princess, you know, she is the daughter of Yuvavan. Yuvavan is the uh, king of all mountains, and uh, the daughter of Yuvavan, you can imagine how she could be like, and, uh, and she wears the Kirita, and how should be, how expensive, how should be, and Kirita by itself independently has got such a Mahima, that whoever raises the Yati, the Kirita of Devi, he will get number of benefits. I am repeating. Gatayi Maharishyatvam Gaganamaniti Sandra Gatidam Kiritam Te Haimam Imagiri Imagiri Sute Itta Yatiya Avire Yachaya Surana Sabala Chandra Sakalam so here, and all big words in this sloka, and which I will be explaining in the next class uh, very much. And today in our house, my daughter and all the friends joined together and celebrated. Outer in the Hari Yajna for three hours, and uh, today it happened to be our marriage anniversary, 48 year. So uh, we request uh, all your best wishes and blessings on this day for us.